Hello, I am Valentijn Viss. Um, I'm working as associate professor in the industrial design engineering faculty. Um, and since about 10 years, I'm working in uh, healthcare and design for healthcare. And in this small lecture, I will talk a little about e-health and per se of game design. Um, in the healthcare system, as you will know, a lot of people are active and, have, as, are active and at work. Um, doctors perform surgeries, patients swallow pills, patients do all kinds of therapies, uh, births are given, wounds are healed, and therapies are taken. In all these of these activities, all of these people need a kind of motivation in order to do the right thing at the right moment. And um, in motivation, designers can help because we as designers are partly or very good at, at, at uh, designing motivations for people. We know how to design a product so that people can buy it. We know how to design a product so that people can use it. And uh, perhaps also design something that people can keep using it. So in design for motivation, we have first to know uh, what are exactly motivators and what are strong motivators. And uh, we can find them um, in games, because um, as I think most of you will know, games are very strong motivators. When you, when you play a game, you are kind of immersed or swallowed up in a, in a kind of game world experience. So you have very strong motivators to do a specific action into, uh, in, 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 uh, for a given task. Um, so all these of the motivators of games like leaderboards or uh, challenges, uh, rewards that you are given, uh, metaphors um, that you are playing with, uh, role playing or fantasy worlds, they work very, very good, very effective. But how can you treat them as a designer and also how can you treat them in the, in the healthcare context? Um, first, it, is, it, it was for us important to understand what exactly happens when people play games and uh, play games in a kind of context that people can learn something about it. And for this uh, we designed about, uh, or we uh, made a theory about uh, five years ago on per se of game design, um, which entails the process how people, when they play a game, leave a little bit the world of daily life and move towards a kind of game world experience. So game worlds and real worlds, they are, well, not, not the things around us, but they are the things that we experience. We can experience the same surrounding as a fantasy world or as, as a real world. Of course, not totally, but, but in effect, we can, we, can, we can play with things. Um, and uh, what, what is the specific things about, uh, what's specific about games is that people are transported, leave a little bit the real world behind to get into a more immersive and engaging game world. This game world is often very fun and people like it to be there, they are motivated, they are free because everything you do when playing a game doesn't have so, so much serious consequences. Whereas in the real world you always have to take care what you will do, it might have an effect on your life or on your relationships. So so game worlds, they offer freedom and, uh, and uh, enjoyability and the kind of immersive or engaging power. Now that is exactly um, the kind of motivation that you can use as a designer. So if you put people into game worlds a little bit, uh, people will be more motivated to perform specific tasks and they can learn something about it or they can change their behavior about it, uh, when you use game elements in the right uh, way. Um, so that's the next question. First we understood what are game world experiences and next is how to design for that. And um, for that uh, it was uh, this year that we uh, wrote uh, um, a paper about a method how to design for Pierces of games. Um, that's this paper, it's rather thick. But uh, we made it, we wrote it together with the design company and also with a design uh, method specialist and we summarized it as in this very colorful and playful recipe. It's a recipe for designing per series of games. And this recipe has, has specific dishes and if you follow all the dishes you have a very, fairly good chance that you end up with an effective game. The first dish is, a, is that you obtain the transfer effect. What is it exactly that you want to achieve with your game? Is it that uh, you want people to learn something, to change their behavior, um, to stay more uh, compliant to their therapy, to swallow their uh, medicine more regularly? Uh, well, it, that's the transfer effect and that's often forgotten. And you have to, to talk with all your stakeholders about um, uh, specifying what is the transfer effect for 
um, your uh, view user. What, what are you designed for? What is your design goal? The second stage is the user context. You want to investigate uh, what your user consists of. What is his personality? What are the game elements that uh, your users want to use or are motivated by? Uh, what is the kind of context of use? When can you uh, uh, insert your product into the, con into the daily life of the, of the, of the user? Um, and also, what, what are the other users around your primal users? So, for, for instance, in healthcare, you would never have a, have a patient in, on its own. You also oh, almost always have a medical specialist or a general, general practitioner, perhaps some family members or informal caregivers. They are all part of the user context. And uh, you have to know the, the whole context before you start designing. So you have the goal, you have the context, and you, then you can start your game design. And that's the design, the gamification. Therefore, we wrote all kinds of tips and uh, uh, some ingredients and utensils. You can all find them here and uh, in the paper. And in the last stage, you can evaluate if the game that you designed really worked or not. Um, um, yeah, so we have a theory of Perseus of game design and we have a method. And with this, we designed uh, in the past years about 30 games. Uh, some of the games were uh, for elderly with dementia to uh, um, motivate them for more active behavior. And that, that was the case of the Tovertafel. Um, the PhD student Hester Andriessen made a huge company out of it. Um, it was projection on a coffee table in, in care homes for people with dementia. Um, uh, some games were projected like uh, swimming dolphins. And if you moved your hands, uh, the dolphins would come to your hand. And it was exactly this kind of movement, the physical activity of these elderly people, that was our, that was our aim for transfer effect. So that worked. Um, we also made a lot of games on therapy adherence. Uh, for instance, youngsters in addiction therapy or uh, elder or uh, elderly or adults uh, with anxiety problems. Uh, we made games to prepare children for hospital visits. So on all kinds, all kinds of transfer effect, we, we developed some games. And I will uh, end my talk with a small um, case, case, case study of a PhD student from here, uh, Marie-Rose van Doorn, on her persuasive game design, how she used it in addiction care. Um, this product, uh, it is called a Ready, Set, Go uh, product, and um, it's an app, it's of course a gameful app. And, um, well, uh, when the project started, um, uh, um, a substance use addiction uh, therapy institute came to us to help, to, to ask if we could design something that would motivate youngsters with addiction problems, so we were on drugs uh, mostly, um, to stick more to their therapy. So therapy adherence for youngsters in addiction care, that was the context. Then we uh, first, well, we first uh, discussed the transfer effect. What is exactly what you want to achieve? Do you re really want all these youngsters to never use, touch drugs in the rest of their lives? Then we can't help you, or at least we don't know if we can help you. But we can help you if we, uh, uh, if we zoom in on a specific goal uh, together. So we talked with all the stakeholders and all the therapy uh, makers and the therapists themselves and also the youngsters in which, which uh, part of the therapy we could design something that, that might be achievable for us as, as a designer and would, would help these youngsters. And that was um, inside uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, that's the main form of therapy that all um, people use in mental health care. Um, in cognitive, cognitive behavioral therapy, people have to set goals. Uh, for instance, the goal can be uh, to use uh, less uh, marijuana in the, in, the, in the coming weeks, coming three weeks, for instance. And uh, these people had, well, firstly difficulty to set the goals, but also to achieve the goals. And we thought, well, if we make a game that uh, uh, help people in setting and achieving the goals and providing some feedback, how they are and what they have accomplished, we might perhaps increase the therapy adherence. So uh, that, that was the transfer effect we decided upon, uh, together with the whole context, and we uh, moved towards the user research phase. 
uh, we did some studies and interviews with all the clients, that is uh, all, the, all the patients, and it uh, turned out that most of them were could, could be categorized as uh, sensation seekers, uh, very impulsively driven. So they, th that was also, of course, correlated with, with their uh, substance uh, use. Um, they, they want something and they want it now. And uh, so long-term plans are difficult. So we have, we have to perhaps use some game elements that, that, uh, that has some risk in them. Um, then we investigated what is exactly the context. And the context was that a lot of these youngsters came to, a, to the therapy uh, facility, but after the therapy they went home and uh, for a few days and then came back to the therapist. Uh, so they were in ambulant care. So it might, have, might be some difficulty. They might, they might be uh, totally um, uh, well healthy and have, have nice promises in the therapy facility but when they are on their own in, the, in their normal environment they might still forget about all the things that they promised or all the things that they, that they wanted to do and uh, uh, well uh, get uh, 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 listen to their um, um, impulsity or their sensation seeking uh, behavior and uh, use drugs again. So this ambulant care context was, was a little bit difficult and uh, we then performed a small user experiment, experiment in which we tested what kind of uh, game elements would be favored by the different stakeholders. So we asked uh, a group of uh, patients what kind of game elements would you like to appear in the game. And these uh, patients they said well we will like something that is uh, that uh, has some risk in them. So it's something that we can bet upon. That it's not certain that we get it. That, that there's some danger in it because we like a little bit of danger and um, uncertainty and then we can get some high profit. So um, that was the kind of wager game element. And we we, we would include it later. And they also said, well, we like something that uh, contributes to our personal values, do something that that made us, make us, makes us feel better as a, as a person, that we, that we have something, that we can get something out of it as, 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 as a specific person. Um, and we asked the staff members, so the therapist as well, and they said, well, these youngsters, they w will definitely like risks and wagers, but they were, are also very motivated by extrinsic rewards, so uh, by money, for instance, or um, I don't know, freedom that they would get, um, or uh, freedom from the therapy, that is. So extrinsic rewards. So there was a little bit of difference between what were the preferred game elements. The client said, well, we like uh, personal values, and the staff member said they will like extrinsic rewards. So ask all your stakeholders what they like, and not, not only one of them, but uh, uh, best to have a, have a lot of different groups. But they, uh, um, they both uh, thought that uh, wagers would work well. So we designed a first uh, game, a uh, minimal viable game, in which we used a wager and a metaphor that was a kind of mountain that you could climb uh, towards your, uh, your goal. Uh, we provided some progression feedback and rewards. And we tested it first with students if it would work, so if, if all the buttons worked on, on the app, it was a, a programmed app on the cell phone. And then we also studied it with patients. And it's, the results were, especially with the patients, that they demanded more personalization. They want to have more control about the tasks they would set. Um, and they also want, wanted to have more control about the rewards. So the war, rewards sh would be personal. They want to set their own rewards. Some of the patients want to be rewarded by uh, a nice cake and other ones by uh, a visit to a concert or a visit to, uh, to a party. Um, and uh, they also thought, uh, they also said uh, to us that it was very important that the game would be integrated into the therapy as a kind of therapy module. So it, it shouldn't be something aside from the present context, but it would, would be the deeper it would be integrated in the therapy, the better it would be. Because then they thought that the game was not just a game for leisure or for fun, but was something serious that would help them um, to stay away from the drugs. So, taken all these uh, uh, results from the small study and also the earlier context uh, uh, user research, we made a final design in which uh, we used uh, customizable rewards, customizable tasks, and a kind of metaphor uh, still of, of a mountain that you could climb towards the end of your therapy. And we are testing it now on uh, the motivation, so are people, do people like it um, better than, for instance, standard therapy? And also on the treatment effects, so not only 
do people like it better, but also does it help them to uh, stay away from drugs more than the traditional therapy? So it's just a little bit, it, it's a, it, it is a, a kind of packaging, uh, this motivational design. So you, uh, you, you use the core of psychological research on what kind of therapy will work and you redesign it, you make it more motivational and then, uh, well, what happens, I think it's, it's about 20% more adherence to the therapy. People will like it more and because they will like it more, they will be more adherence to use it and we hope therefore also the therapeutic effects will be stronger. But at least uh, most people uh, like it more, like, like to interact uh, more with uh, design therapy than with, uh, well, the, the more plain undesigned uh, therapy. So in that, in that way, we already as designers have some, uh, 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 some outcome. The learnings of these kinds of projects is uh, first and common mistakes that people make is that um, you have to manage your stakeholders. You have a lot of stakeholders. You have the therapist, you have the, like I said in the beginning, you have the patients, you have all the uh, 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 persons around the patients, like the friends or the family or the schools in this case. And then you have the psychologist who know what kind of therapy will work and what kind of, uh, for what kind of person. And you have uh, often also design companies or uh, programming companies. And all of these stakeholders have different expectations of you as a designer. They expect all something different of you. Some of you uh, expect uh, uh, just effects. So for instance, less, uh, less drug use. Others uh, expect uh, really nice looking uh, prototypes or products even that they can buy, uh, buy in in the shop and other expect uh, uh, well well very good theories so you have to manage all the expectations and uh, and that, that's something you have to be conscious of as a designer in this kind of overwhelming uh, context of uh, healthcare and for instance uh, you can see this this effect of this expectation in how you frame your product if, if we framed our game uh, for addiction care as a game that you could use during your um, uh, therapy process, people were not so motivated to use it because they thought, well, it, it is only, uh, I, I can use it if I want, it's kind of fun made, and uh, it will probably not have a big effect. But if you frame it as uh, a more effective therapy uh, innovation, then people will use it because they think it will be better than the previous therapy. So um, the expectation and the framing is crucial. Further, uh, the second thing is that you have to be conscious about the in integration of your product into this whole context. So uh, when will people use it and for how long will people use it? And when, uh, when will people end uh, in using it? And this integration can be very difficult, especially in healthcare and uh, e-health, because often the uh, information systems don't collaborate or don't work so smooth. Uh, and thirdly, um, it is very important to respect um, your patients so uh, and as much in your design also as possible so to uh, insert some open spaces in which you can let the patients customize uh, their own uh, their their own game elements for instance or their own motivations and often this this will help um, so uh, we have uh, now uh, the, the theory of uh, uh, per se game design explained uh, that's uh, using game elements in order to shift people from a real world experience towards a game world experience, which is more motivating. Uh, then we um, discussed uh, uh, methods, how you can achieve it, and one case study on addiction care. And as, uh, as an end note, I would say that uh, healthcare designers are very kind of creative connectors in, into this uh, great uh, uh, context of, of healthcare. Uh, we get our principles, for instance, that we use from psychology. We get our means uh, from design practice, the game elements, for instance, and our, con our uh, context understanding from the healthcare system. And when we talk to the, to the specialists, we talk to the patients, or we enter the buildings uh, wh where the he healthcare is practiced. And with this inspiration of all these kinds, so of, of the fundamental uh, therapy, or the fundamental psychology, psychological uh, systems, the means of design and the contextual um, information, we can create some uh, value, I think, uh, for healthcare and some improvements with our creativity. Thank you.